Uh, hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us for the uh, Playcrafting Unity virtual info session. Um, we're going to get started here uh, shortly. I'm just going to get our instructors to join us, and we'll we'll start in one second. So uh, hang out for one moment, and we'll we'll get things going in a in a minute here. All right, so um, our instructors should be joining us shortly. There's Owen now and uh, and Sam. Owen is our instructor out in uh, in Boston, so he'll be running the Unity course for those of you who are interested in the Boston session. And Sam uh, will be joining us as the instructor for the upcoming course in New York. And Jeremy was a, a part of our uh, course that just finished up recently out in San Francisco, so he's going to share a little bit about uh, his experience with playcrafting and and uh, what, how the course went for him and what he experienced. Um, and so, uh, like I sent in the email, if you have any questions, just please uh, feel free to tweet them at us at playcrafting uh, and hashtag unity info. Or you can email them directly to me at dave at playcrafting. And if we don't answer all of them today, of course, feel free to tweet them over to me. Um, shoot them over to me afterwards, and we'll make sure that we get all of your questions answered. Um, so I'll just start things off by giving an introduction to Sam. Sam's run this course for us a number of times in the past. Um, he's a game designer here in New York City. He's currently got uh, an exhibit up at MoMA PS1 out in Long Island City um, and has a wonderful game that I was checking out online the other day. Um, so Sam. What's up, guys? You see me? Sorry, there's a little bit of lag. Um, we are not getting your camera right now, Sam. See? Am I on? Uh, you are on, uh, but I'm not getting the screen share. I just have your uh, your placeholder. Gotcha. OK. Go. Screen share. I just have your uh, your placeholder. Okay. Sure. Um, Sam, maybe try. Um, sometimes it helps if you just re. Uh, you might have to restart your browser. Um, in the meantime, while Sam's trying that. Uh oh, everyone's freezing. <laughs> well, I'm here. <laughs> Go Owen. Yeah, thanks. Uh, well, if people are watching and um, Dave is, I don't know what happened with Dave. Um, I guess I'll talk a little bit about the course. Uh, the idea is to 
provide a complete overview of Unity uh, in an eight-week span. Uh, the beauty of this course is that it's project-oriented, so that the uh, when we learn new things about prefabs or collision or animation, it's in the lens and the context of an actual game. So. The hope is by the end of the eight weeks, you have um, four completed games, right? Uh, I think they mention a arcade shooter, one of your own design, an endless runner, and things like that. Uh, so it's really great to see that rather than just sort of creating these abstract things and I can lecture you all day about collision, but actually making things you learn a lot more. Um, I don't know if Sin's ready or not. Seems like he's got the slideshow going, which is good. All right. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Sorry about that. Yeah, okay. there, I guess there was something wrong with my uh, Hangouts when I started it up. Cool. All right, so this is this is just a little short presentation on that I usually do in person at Microsoft, but this is for you guys watching at home, a little truncated version here. Um, this is the Unity 3D course. So I've been teaching it for a while. I sort of been like crafting's like oldest instructor from when it first like started off as a games forum in New York City. And it's been really fun teaching this course. I wasn't the first instructor to teach this course. I've sort of developed it over the course of five sessions. So I've taught this class five times. And it's been very successful. So the way the course is structured out is in eight weeks and it's very, very project focused. So if you've taken a look at the site, we go over three different projects, two weeks each. Now you might be thinking, okay, three, three projects, two weeks each, three times two is six. That's not eight, right? right? Well, <laughs> the last two weeks are your final project. So actually it is four projects in this eight week course. It is pretty rapid fire. We very much emphasize this project-focused learning style because we've seen it have much, much greater results than dedicating eight weeks into one game. If you dedicate eight weeks into four separate smaller games that get bigger and bigger in size, you actually get a much, much better end result, and you learn a lot more as well. So OK, a little bit about Unity. Uh, we've been using Unity uh, to teach this course, mostly because it's one of the most accessible game engines. And you guys might know that there's a bunch of games made in Unity that you probably know and love. Like Ori and the Blind Forest was a huge title, huge indie title that came out. Uh, Wasteland 2, that was a really cool uh, Kickstarter project. Um, there are plenty of AAA titles as well as coming out and have come out. Like for example, there was a game called ReCore, which was a Microsoft exclusive on Xbox One. And there was you know, Limbo, Inside, a bunch of cool stuff. I'm sure you kind of know it, but I like talking about Unity because it's, it's awesome. So a little bit about myself now. Um, I'm a, a, like a Unity developer. I have an art background, but I really got into programming in college, which sort of brought me where I am today. So I do have a lot of programming experience. However, I didn't really come from a programming background. A little bit about my work. Um, I make this video game called Zarvat, and it's coming out soon, uh, by the end of this year, on Nintendo Switch and Wii U. It's like a local multiplayer shooter. It's, it's pretty, it'll be, it'll be fun. Yeah, so when it comes out, <laughs> You should buy it. <laughs> All right. So it's a little bit of gifts here. Uh, these are pretty old gifts, but they capture the feel of the game really well. Another project that I did was Emissaries with Ian Chang at MoMA PS1. So, well, it's not only at MoMA PS1. There's actually one that also ran in the Hirschhorn down in DC. The and. This is part two. We have a trilogy up at, in New York City and at MoMA. Uh, you can go check it out. till It's running till the end of the summer, which is pretty sick. So it's pretty cool. It's all made in Unity. And 
it's all a live simulation. So you can go there, it's like always different every time you look at it. Pretty cool. Um, this was an image of it running at the Hirschhorn. It's pretty cool. Uh, and that's me, I'm sitting there. This, this image is really funny because <laughs> this is the first day I went there. And this is not my work. This is not my work. This is the Mac OS screensaver. <laughs> And the funny thing is, when I went there, um, the, the, the Mac Mini here was set up with a sleep timer. So it was running the screensaver for like the first entire day. And I was not allowed to touch the exhibit. I was not allowed to wake it up. So that, that was kind of funny. So I had to take the picture. It's great. Um, also teaching with us is Adriano Valle. He is my TA. I actually work with him on my uh, day job, which I, I do. I should show you. It's, I'm working on this RPG, which is my day job here, and you can check it out. It's pretty cool. Avaria versus. That's me over there. Uh, that's playing. That's me playing with Andrew. I'm getting wrecked in this GIF. It's very fun. Uh, this game is coming out early 2018. It's a turn-based JRPG. And Adriano works with me. He is a fellow programmer on the project. Uh, he is the TA for the course as well, so you know you're getting like two pretty good instructors in this course, which is pretty cool. He's TA'd with me before, so good dynamic there. Now I want to talk about the course, so enough about me. Um, this course really is project focused. So by project focused, I mean we 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 go through four different projects, and each of the four projects we make sure you understand exactly what you're doing as you make it. We constantly ask the question, how do you learn to make video games? And we answer that question by saying, you learn the same exact way to make video games as you learn any sort of language. That's almost why they call it a programming language. I know, kind of crazy, right? <laughs> So we, we try to teach you how to make video games the same way you learned to English. Like, uh, I'm assuming all of you watching know how to English. So with that in mind, this course was structured in a way in which we try to teach game making in a very liberal way. Not in a way where it's like, oh yeah, you know, you click and drag, because we're using the same professional tools, but we teach them in very ch in, in chunks and ways to build off of previous knowledge. The same way when you first learn how to uh, speak and write English, you don't first start by composing a poem or writing uh, The Great Gatsby. You start by writing the alphabet. And that's exactly what we do in this course. So if you have programming experience, that gives you an up, but we, we do structure the course with a focus in the first section of learning game-based programming. It's not the same as regular computer science you sort of learn in school. Um, I took a few court, like I sort of took a half a degree, half of a bachelor's degree of computer science. I sort of didn't want to take the rest of it because it didn't really fit gaming, which was all I was But most of it, although it helps in making games, it is not the same in terms of the things you need to know. Um, regular computer science is very empirical, whereas in game making, you have everything running in real time and over several frames. So in this course, we, we don't teach traditional computer science techniques in the same way you might learn at um, a regular college. We, te we teach you how to talk to the computer to make you tell the computer, to tell Unity how to get something done. Unity and in this course is that we emphasize telling the computer to do things that you know how to do. So for example, in Unity, we will create a cube and we will want to move the cube around. It's very basic, of course. But you sort of you'll learn how to move the cube around yourself. You know, you click and you drag it around and you move it around the screen. But we have to we have to tell a computer how to do that. So then we go, we dive into the code and we, we think, okay, how can we do that? How can we tell the computer to move this cube for us when we press this button? So we, we build off of the building blocks that we already know and not in a 
hard computer science way, but in a very game making focused way. So as we as I reiterated before, we, we have three main projects here. The fourth is the final project. So the three main projects. The first one is a flappy project. Um, some of you watching might go, oh shit, I hate that game. How can you how can you teach us how to make the worst video game to ever oh well, I, I hate it as well. <laughs> I've never liked the game ever since the first time I saw it when somebody showed it to me like, oh, hey, this game is cool. It's terrible, really. I mean, it has some cool concepts in it. And the reason why we're actually teaching it is not because of the cool concepts, but actually because it's such a crappy game. <laughs> the reason why we start with the Flappy Bird project is because we have the goal of completing an entire game. and this is a very good game to start with. It's the same way when you start learning to write a language or um, start learning how to compose music. You don't really start by needing to compose the next Assassin's Creed, really. You just, you just want to put something together and make sure you sort of know everything from beginning to end. And we learn a lot in the Flappy Bird Project. Arguably, in the Flappy Bird Project, you learn most of what you need to make your greatest game ever. But after the Flappy Bird project, we jump right in. Uh, we do really short presentations, show off to each other, get feedback from your peers, we, and we jump right into the shooter project. And this one sort of varies based on what the students want. But we have done an asteroids project where you sort of control a ship, and we deal a lot more with velocity and rotations in the shooter project. Um, some classes, when the average skill level is very high, I've had some shooter projects be completely 3D, and that's always a boot. Um, and that, that totally depends. But the shooter project is almost repackaging the Flappy project in a very, very different context. We, go, we use everything again and again and again. So if you miss out on the first two weeks of the Flappy project, you will have a hard time in the shooter project. However, we're going to be doing the same exact thing, only adding more stuff and more complex things. Where if you think about it, like, and if you follow any Unity tutorial, when you move the roller ball around using the arrow keys, that's sort of the same exact thing you do in Halo when you move Master Chief around using the analog stick. Think about it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> in the third project, we do the walk around. Now this project is pretty fun because we go 3D and we start we start having the students set up a lot of artistic creativity. Some of them may download some assets off the asset store and compose their own scenes. That's one of the most fun parts of game making, just level designing. Or some of them will focus on a very uh, technical side where we've had students actually make a networked first-person shooter in this one, which is very, very cool. So a little example of the past student work that we've had. Here is a student of mine named Ivy. And this was her num project number one, Flappy Bird. And Ivy was really cool because she did all of the art in her game. Now, keep in mind that she has never, ever programmed before. She's never coded before. She's never like even made a website before. And she was able to create this mermaid game, which is not even really a Flappy Bird game. It became more of a avoid the giant sea creatures moving up and down kind of game, which is so fun. And she also made all of the art herself, which she sort of went above, above and beyond here, where most of the other students sort of just grabbed assets off the shelf or used primitive shapes. She was like, you know, oh, screw it, I'll, I'll draw my own. And she did a great job. This was, <laughs> this was a space shooter by Eric. And this one was really funny. It, was, it had a really cool, very unique concept of these like spaceships flying uh, amongst the stars and they're like shooting each other, you know, like having fights. <laughs> um, I, I think he got these assets from sir. I'm not entirely sure <laughs> where they're from. <laughs> This was another project number two by EE, e. and she made a very unviolent game <laughs> because 
uh, video games are quite violent, but she was like, I don't really want it to be too violent. And she made it such that you are trying to shoot down these buttons with pins in a threading factory, which I found was cute in terms of concept. It was very cute. This was EE, e., the same student as this, um, one of her homeworks for the 3D walk around. And she made this beautiful atmospheric scene. The most impressive part of this really was she used no assets. This was using all Unity primitives. It's amazing. Like I would not be able to do this honestly because I do not have the patience to make this little bear out of cylinders and spheres and stretch them and this little nose. Do you see that? That's amazing. And this cool bendy speed tree, this little diamond, this TV. Got this little fire. It was amazing. <laughs> um, in a later class, I actually had uh, this student as well. Oh, sorry. I thought that the next one. OK, well, this was another really cool one. This was um, Eric going, wait, we learned about physics. So let's put that in our homework as well. So this was a great example of when you're in the class, um, you can use everything we teach. There's, this is not a very traditional education environment where you have to like follow the instructions to a T. No, I want you to go crazy. If, you, if you're making games or if you're making any sort of art, you want creativity. And this I, I just absolutely love because it also has this like spotlight there that projects this bunny onto the wall very menacingly. <laughs> uh, anyway, the one I wanted to really talk about, which I uh, tripped up on myself on, was this guy, Kaim. And he was very talented in this homework because this, keep in mind, this was done in pretty much a day. And I was wondering, like, whoa, how did you make this so well? And then I realized, I remembered that Kaim was an architect. <laughs> he, he worked for a pretty big architecture firm in New York City. And he sort of put this together in like a night's work in Unity. He's never programmed before or done anything before, but I'm sure he has designed buildings before. So this was awesome. And this thing over here was great because you can actually drop a ball down here, and then it would it would roll it would roll down these little ramps. All right, so here's a little um, display of the projects that we we did. This one was pretty cool. It's very uh, ethereal. <laughs> it's like you know, Kirby, Hungry Caterpillar. Um, as long as you don't sell these projects, all right, you can put whatever you want. You know. um, there, there are some as well that um, you know students can do whatever they want. We don't own anything you make in this class. Okay, so everything you make is yours to keep. Um, so you can sell it later. You can put it on the App Store. We have had students have their games that they made in the class published to the App Store, which is utterly amazing. A little bit about the demographics of who attends the class. Uh, most students have never coded before. We, we attract a lot of students who want to get into programming and really like video games. So if you, are, if you fit that demographic, then this class is almost filled with your peers. You will be able to connect with the people next to you pretty, pretty easily. Um, you won't be um, the best at the class. We, we also have uh, some students who are very experienced in programming sometimes. Not always, but sometimes they will have extensive programming experience and they want to come in to get some Unity experience. You should hope that one of those students are in your class because they are a great resource. The students who get the most out of their out of the experience are ones who sit next to different people every day and ask them questions and befriend them. And just try to learn what other people know. Because everybody has their own great ideas. Uh, just to reiterate, we have these three projects, and we have project number zero here, which is part of the Flappy Bird project here. Um, in the first day and second day, beginning of the second day, we go over very simple basic coding stuff with a game focus using processing. Um, 
the reason for this is because on the first or second day, you might not fully have Unity set up, but we still want to do stuff, of course. And the way we teach this stuff is, as I say, to reiterate, we build upon the previous things we have learned. We, we learn something, we learn this building block, and then we build upon it, and then we get harder and harder and more difficult and more difficult, and we, we go up the slope of game-making difficulty. It's this, this really, really nice gradient that we go on, where we start from the most simple thing. We start from learning how to draw circles, three, then to making the circles move, and then we go into Unity, we go into 3D, and then we go into more and more complex things. And then eventually, you're making Halo 16. <laughs> yeah, so here's a little cute illustration of how we learn on this gradient. That's, in, that's our entire philosophy for this class. We start small, and then we build upon the same things. We don't learn something that we only use once. Everything we learn in this class has a place in almost every game that's released in the you know, past few years, or past decade, really. Here's a little timeline of our gradient. Um, for the New York course, this is not the same for the Boston course. For the New York course, we start on June 12th, which is coming up. And on the first day, we will start on Project Zero, and then, once everyone has Unity set up, we will start on project one, which is a black paper project. Project one lasts for two weeks, and then we start on project two. We do a little bit of presentations just to get you guys to talk more, but <laughs> other than that, that's sort of on you. Um, project two finishes, and then we do project three. Project three um, is, is the 3D game, three walk around. It might not be a walk around depending on what the students want. We have had classes where none of the students like first-person walkers at all, so we do something else. And then finally, the final project where you can put all of your bones on the table. The final project is the most intense because you get what you put in. If you don't want to do the final project, there isn't really a guide for you anymore. That we're there, like we're, we will be there for you to answer your questions and help you out. Your fellow students will be there. Um, we encourage uh, students to form groups because games are made in groups to work on the final project, but you can work at it solo. You know, my, my game, Zarbot, is made solo, um, but I also know the viability of working on a group in my JRPG that I work on, for example. So there are pros and cons to both. You learn a lot more solo, but of course in a group, you, know, you can sort of uh, delegate and you can work on parts and you can have something greater than the sum of its parts. Um, a little bit about the class structure. Um, this is mostly for the New York City one. I think the Boston one is similar, but the class starts at 6.30. But you should be there a little earlier. So Adrian and I are usually there pretty early. Uh, we might be working on other stuff, but you are more than welcome to come in early. Um, I totally recommend it because you can get a little bit of stretch time where you can ask us more questions, you know, or get our input. You know, we can hang out, uh, watch some game design videos. The space is open for you before class a little, so uh, I would take advantage of that, take advantage of our, our time. Um, and that's about it about the course. Um, there's, there's obviously a little bit of difference in the Boston course, so I can't speak all too much for that, but that's, that's about it for my presentation. Cool, I'll, I'll just speak for the Boston course real quick, but basically the same thing. Um, with the Project Zero for us, we're going to make a call really quickly. Uh, we might dabble in a little bit of visual programming and things like that, just for those people who are totally terrified of actually writing code. Um, but yeah, same basic structure, same ideas, same learning goals, same pace, same time, same dates. So um, thank you for covering that, Sam. Uh, I think Jeremy is going to talk now about his experience as a student in the class and the San Francisco uh, chapter, I believe, right? So yeah, thanks, Jeremy. Yeah. Um, hey, everyone. I hope everyone's doing great. Um, yeah, so as Owen mentioned, I just recently graduated from our first um, Unity eight-week course here in San Francisco last April, and I'm just here to share like what I have experienced 
Um, so a little background about me. I'm a product designer um, at Braintree. It's a payments processing company. It's also owned by PayPal. So not a lot to do with games on my day to day. Um, games is mostly just like a hobby of mine. I've, I've been playing games since I was um, growing up. So it's been pretty interesting. Um, yeah, and my day today is mostly working on web apps and web experiences. Um, so I have a little like background on programming. It's very light, like some JavaScript, some like well, HTML and CSS are not really programming languages, but they're some code, kind of. Um, and I basically really wanted to explore like creating experiences that um, was very different from my day to day. Like games have this like um, immersive quality to them, and I really wanted to understand how I can make um, things that are focused on fun. Like how can I make like um, experiences that would have a very broad range of emotions? Uh, that's, that's what interests me. Um, so I tried Googling stuff. I tried to see like what's out there. And uh, Unity kept on popping up. Um, it seemed like the best platform to like develop games on, where you could like deploy to all the different like platforms, be it like mobile or web or like desktop, uh, Windows and Mac. So I tried to learn that on my own online, like found a couple of um, like resources um, that I tried to go into. And I think I had difficulty in like, uh, one of the main struggles I had trying to learn on my own was that there were a lot of like basic concepts of game making that wasn't really well explained. Like let's say they go into um, some physics stuff, like some vector math stuff that's really over my head and a lot of like programming like patterns that um, they assume I already have. So it was kind of a difficult process for me. And also like um, I don't deal with game design, game programming day-to-day. Programming -day. So um, uh, after a week of like maybe a few days of not like practicing, I immediately forget and like I, I have a hard time like getting back into the groove of, of what I was learning. So um, luckily, I found Playcrafting, which is uh, we just opened um, this year. So I was very fortunate to join the first class. Um, it's as like Owen and Sam mentioned, like there's a very diverse group of people who would probably be joining your class. In my specific class, there was like uh, people who were there was an architect, there was like a uh, Backend engineer, there was like a game designer, there was a game producer, and like with different varying uh, knowledge of programming. So it was very fun to see like um, these different people and like how they um, take to the course and stuff. So I guess um, um, it was really, it was really like um, learning by doing. Like all, I think that really helped me like understand the basic concepts of Unity, like how how do games work under the hood, like how do you get things to move and stuff, and like having those very focused um, game projects to work on had really helped me like focus my learning abilities. Um, also, like I think one of the main things I got from the course uh, that really helped was like we after every session there's like a homework that they give you and like you get what you put in for sure um, the the homeworks really helped me like sit down and actually like review the things I learned throughout the day and like on the next session I get to ask a lot of like dumb questions luckily like our instructors were like pretty um, pretty patient and pretty like um, supportive and like whatever I asked so that really helped me like level up my uh, understanding of game making and one of the other things I found really useful was that um, aside from learning how to uh, use Unity, uh, it, was, it also covered like the basics of game design. Like um, why, why, were, why do these decisions um, matter? Or like why, do we, why did we build this game this way? Like there's a lot of like discussions about um, what's the best way to like uh, make games in perspective of like a player and all that. So we did some play testing as well. We did some like um, critiques during the classes. So I really love that part too, like discussing um, game making and why that matters. Um, I'm going to quickly show um, some of the work we've done throughout the class, but it's going to be really quick. Um, let's see. Share screen.
yeah, so this was kind of like, um, as Sam was mentioning, you do like a, a flappy bird kind of thing. So this was kind of like our version of that. This was kind of, this is a group work. And like, instead of a bird, we used a plastic bag. And like, instead of you tapping the screen, there's like this fan that follows you around. That was pretty fun. That was our first like um, attempt at making sprites. It was really cool. And like, the next project we did was like the 3D exploration thing. So um, I also learned uh, Blender throughout the class because I had no background in 3D. So that was also fun. Like, how do we make um, things move in like a 3D space? It was very challenging, but like the instructors helped us a lot in understanding the Z axis. And like for a final project, I just wanted to make something really simple with the goal of kind of like trying to at least release something in the App Store. So I'm still working on this game now, but it's kind of like an endless runner where you just like orbit around different things and it's pretty simple, but um, it's I have learned a lot while making these games. So you all should join. It's pretty fun. Awesome, awesome. Uh, thank uh, you, Jeremy, for and Jeremy and Sam and and Owen. Uh, and the other thing I'll just like throw in real quick at the end to sort of sum it up is depending on where you're starting from, whether it's like you have game design experience, coding experience. Um, depending on the city as well, um, especially in New York, a big part of it is also the community that follows up like after the Unity course. So we run um, expos seasonally in the summer, the spring, about every three to four months where um, developers, uh, some of whom have taken the course and some who are just indie game developers on their own are invited to uh, come play test or share out and promote their games. Um, the biggest one that we've done to date uh, is coming up in August um, called Play NYC at Terminal 5. Uh, usually we host them in New York at the Microsoft Center in Times Square, and we just did one out in Boston at Laugh Boston a couple weeks ago. So, uh, and those are usually, um, they're, they're usually either free or very, very low cost. Uh, we normally don't charge the developers uh, for Play NYC. There is a, there is a charge this year because of how big it's going to be, but uh, normally they're just, it's, it's for us to allow people to keep honing their skills and their games and get get feedback from from the community um, so that's a big part of it and I'll just wrap we have one question that came in from William for Sam uh, William was wondering that if in the New York course uh, is will you or could is there the possibility of talking about making simulations with unity like the one you worked on with Ian Chang uh, he's interested in that type of work um, you can, you're can. you more than welcome to do that for your final project. Um, a simulation is a very, very abstract and loose term. So technically, very technically, all games are simulations. Uh, but of course, uh, most people might think that a game like Call of Duty is not really much a simulation, whereas Conway's Game of Life is more of a simulation. Uh, both of those are, you know, games, and there is definitely a difference in um, what one person might call simulation, what another person might call simulation. However, with that said, um, all of the tools used here are almost integral to every Unity application known to date. So we go over all the basics of Unity. This isn't a, a Unity course only for games. Because uh, we do have a lot of students coming in to make uh, VR uh, things for like architecture firms. So it is pretty open ended. This is more of a course to teach you how Unity itself works, how to set up rigid bodies, colliders, how to script things out, how to make things move and interact, um, how to build a player out, stuff like that. We do have a focus on games because it, it's a really, really good motivator. Because, like, who doesn't like video games, right? So, that's one of the main reasons why we focus on these uh, video games as projects, but very, very applicable to simulations. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Sam. Um, and, and William, if you want to connect, uh, if there's more specific questions that you have, I, I can follow up with you uh, offline uh, either later or tomorrow. And if you have any other questions that are more specific to that. Um, all right, well, thank you uh, for joining us, Jeremy, Sam, and Owen, and thanks everybody who watched online. Um, I'll follow up with everyone tomorrow, and if you have any further questions, uh, we'll make sure to get those answered. Um, so thanks, everybody, and have a great night.
Bye. Bye. Bye.